Okay, this video is going to show an overview of how to get your ROMs onto a RetroPie uh, installation on a Raspberry Pi. There are three main ways of getting the ROMs on there. We'll go over each one, and depending on the situation, sort of one might suit you over the other. Uh, the directory that the RetroPie installs on, this is on RetroPie 2.4, but the principles are pretty similar almost whichever version you're on. You can see it starts in the home directory, so we're in HomePie at the moment, and if we change into RetroPie directory, you can see in there we've got two main directories, BIOS and ROMs, and obviously the ROMs is where we want to put the files. A ROM is the software, I guess the software version ripped from an old cartridge or original um, game, might be on a CD or whatever media, into a, f a software file that then these emulators process and run like the original. So depending on what games you've got, um, you can either rip from that the ROMs yourself, or if you've got the cartridge you can download the ROM for that already um, on the internet wherever they wherever you get those so basically get your ROM on your computer and in this directory you can see there's a set of systems and in each system is where you put the ROM file so if we look at a couple of examples we've got the Nintendo which is NES if I change into that directory CD NES you can see if I list that directory out that uh, it's got a few ROMs in there at the end in .NES and the emulator setup in RetroPie will process that NES file and, um, and emulate them. So that's the end directory that you want to get the particular ROMs into. And if I go back up a directory again, you can see the, the list there of the systems that are currently emulated on this. Um, like I say, I think this is 2.4.1, probably this um, this version, but the principle holds on, on most of the installations. The path would be pretty much the same. If I've got, uh, say, MAME, let's go and uh, check that directory, which is the arcade games. Again, if I list that, you can see uh, I've got a few images in there as well, but you can see that um, these are in zip format, uh, which is what main processes it reads the files inside that. And I've, if I had a ROM um, for this, I'd have a zip file, copy it in here, and uh, the emulation had happened. So this is where we need to get them to. This is the the folder structure. And again, to clarify that, you can see with the, that command there, PWD, the folder you want is home pi retro pi ROMs. Now the method I use most of the time to get ROMs from a computer to the Raspberry Pi is an FTP client. So I've got my Raspberry Pi connected with an Ethernet, I've got Cat5 cable uh, into the router effectively, and it's got an internet connection. And then on the PC, I remotely connect to it. So when you connect it up to the, the Raspberry Pi to the TV and it boots up in the start sequence, it'll tell you what the IP is. I think I can see what IP it is if you type IP IF config. Um, ba, 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 ba. So we can see here that the IP of the Pi at the moment is 192.168.0.30 and that's what I've connected um, this tool Patty to, to to read that. So now we know the directory that we want to get to which is home Pi retro Pi ROMs. I'm going to use FileZilla which you can see here and I'm going to connect to Raspberry, which is on the IP we just saw, 192.168.0.13, and I'm choosing SFTP to connect to it, so that's secure FTP. Um, that defaults to, I think, port 22, but uh, it knows what to do there. User Pi and the password Raspberry, and then hit connect here, and you can see on the right-hand side, um, here is the, the graphical representation of paths on the Pi. By default, it goes into home Pi, and we know from that directory we saw a moment ago, that once we're in Pi, we want to go to the RetroPie directory. And in RetroPie, we've got ROMs. And then you've got the, the list of ROMs there. So if I had some Amiga ROMs, I click Amiga here, and then you get the contents of that here. Now, on the left-hand side here is your local computer. So wherever you've downloaded them to, maybe your desktop or a particular folder, you navigate on the left-hand side here to it. And then for argument's sake, if, that, if over here that was my ROM, all I need to do is click that, drag it across, let go, and the um, FileZilla program copies it across, and there it is. So that's that's all you need to do to get the ROM across. And once you've got a ROM in a particular directory, so now I've got a, a file, um, or you know normally that would be an actual ROM in Amiga. When I up when I load or start Emulation Station, the graphical um, menu item for Amiga would appear. When a directory is empty here. In the ROMs directory, it just won't appear in Emulation Station. So that's why you'll see on particular demos, sometimes they've got the option for system, sometimes they haven't. As soon as you've got files in that directory, um, ROMs in that directory, then uh, it will show as an option on Emulation Station. 
So that's a pretty easy, quick way of, of doing it. And similarly, if you want to get rid of things, it's just as easy in this interface to delete as it is to copy across. And um, again, this is just a graphical view of those folders we saw earlier, so you can see the full list of them there. And we bring the terminal session up. Again, you see just exactly the same thing here. And in fact, if I copy one of those files across into the Amiga directory, which we're, we're in there, and go back to this, change directory into Amiga and list it, then you see that file that just got copied across. And um, I don't need that, so I'll delete that out. And that's how you use FileZilla to copy them across. Now, another method, which is just as easy probably, but um, another way of doing it, is using the Windows interface itself. So if I open a window um, in Explorer, like this one, you can see at the top, to get here, all I've had to do is type backslash backslash and then that IP address again of the Pi, 192.168.0.13. The Pi, by default, has got Samba shares created, which is that's basically a way of sharing folders um, so Windows and other systems can see it in a graphical way quite easily. Um, you can see we're in that same directory again, but we don't really get a navigation option. It goes straight to that directory and we can see the BIOS folder and the ROMs folder. So I can go into the ROMs here just by double clicking it and sometimes it's a little bit more sluggish than using an FTP client, but it does work and it's obviously a lot more easier to navigate. And quite often it's quicker than that anyway. Um, I could go into I don't know, Game Gear directory. Again, this one's empty, but then all I'd have to do is go to where my ROMs are. I could click and drag them in here. It's as simple as that, clicking and dragging to get particular files across and obviously this type of interface is very familiar because it's just the normal Windows um, selection of how to get there. It's just to choose your Pi, you can put backslash backslash. Obviously the Pi has to be connected to the network. But then using that ifconfig command we saw earlier, if I fire that up here, ifconfig, you can get your IP here. Type it into um, an Explorer window as backslash backslash then the IP and it will happily show you that directory. You can navigate in and um, copy files in. So it's quite easy to, to see what's going on. You can see um, an open, oh, whoa, a little bit crazy there. Uh, let's open that one. See what sort of files are, are there. You know, it's just, just like another Windows directory really, but personally I prefer the um, files owner approach. It's just a bit more cleaner. Okay, now uh, the third way of doing this, which I never really tend to go for, is connect instead of reading the ROMs from that directory that we saw here, um, where are we? in this directory, home pi, retro pi ROMs. Instead of that, you can tell Emulation Station to look for the ROMs in an attached USB drive um, simply by plugging a USB drive into your Pi. And the one um, configuration tool that you need to do that. If we change directory to back, which means back to the home directory, and we go to RetroPie Setup folder, which is there, and in RetroPie Setup, we're going to run the script, the install or the configuration script for RetroPie, which is uh, run like this: sudo full stop forward slash RetroPie underscore setup dot sh. And in here, there'll be an option uh, under Setup. And this might look marginally different depending on which version you've got, so it's always a good idea to update your RetroPie script to, to get a current version, but it'll be in here somewhere. Um, on mine, it that will, re then link, will enable the Samba ROM shares we saw earlier, if it's not already enabled, but I'm pretty sure it's set by default, so you don't need to do that. But this one here, on my version, it's 328. Uh, we'll set up the USB ROM service, which lets the RetroPie read from uh, an attached USB drive. There's also um, some guides online to say how to configure Emulation Station to look at a different path to read its ROMs from an attached USB drive rather than the SD card. But with SD cards of, say, 32 gig, which is going to get know, probably more ROMs than you'll ever need on an SD card, I'm not sure there's necessarily lots of benefits of using an external USB drive, but there could well be, depending on your circumstance, and it's, it might be quite useful to use. So it is another option to get... USB um, sourced ROMs onto your system rather than having it on the SD card itself. 
So as far as I'm aware, there's those three ways of doing it. FileZilla, using Windows Explorer or the Mac equivalent, etc. And, um, and a USB source. So hopefully that's fairly clear about how to get ROMs from uh, your desktop on your computer or download folder onto the Raspberry Pi and use them. And once they are in those particular folders, then it, Emulation Station should just pick them up. And one thing you might actually, whilst we're here, you can see one option here is reset the ownership permission, permissions of Home Pi, Retro Pi, ROMs. Because when you copy files over in certain ways, sometimes the permission on that file can get a bit mixed up. And we always need the user Pi to be able to read and, I think, execute those ROMs. So if you get a problem after copying ROMs and you can see that there's a like permission issue or it can't read it, it's worth running this and just reset all the permissions on that folder so it's back to normal. But using FileZilla I've never really had a permission problem because I'm logging in as Pi and doing everything as user Pi anyway. But um, it's a good uh, good facility to have in case you do have issues. Again, if there's any issue, um, problems or questions you've got about getting ROMs from uh, your computer to the Pi, put a question in the comments and hopefully I'll be able to help you out or I'm sure some others will. If this video has been useful, please uh, click the thumbs up like button. Thanks. And if you want any more tips, please do subscribe and you'll be the first to know when I've got some new videos up about configuring RetroPie. Thanks.